Hi super nerds. So we're starting our Earth resources topic and we're going to start up with a little discussion on renewable and non-renewable resources. Okay, so let's start with some definitions. First off, uh, renewable resources, they're essentially resources that are replenished by the environment over fairly short periods of time. This can be expanded to stuff which is replenished by us over a short period of time. For example, um, when we think about wood, um, old growth forests are not renewable. However, a pine plantation is very renewable because it's you know you can run through the full cycle in about seven years. Um, and what, renewable resources that so they real they'll regenerate um, usually by the time we've used it all up. However, non-renewable those are resources which tend to not come back. They're not easily replenished by the environment or by us. And we'll go through some examples in a few minutes. Um, so natural resources, there's something else we need to talk about. They are resources which are found in nature, obviously. Um, they require little to no processing, so into new products. So they basically are as we take them out of the, you know, from the earth. So coal, old growth forests, so both of those are non-renewable. Um, so natural doesn't necessarily mean better. Um, wind and solar energy so we should be moving away from coal and towards wind and solar um, but they're both natural resources just one's renewable one's not and one causes horrendous pollution and the other two don't um, then we have made resources so these are resources which are found in nature they're made or produced by people so aluminium is one that we'll talk about a bit and aluminium aluminium comes from an ore called borgzite borgzite um, wheat wheat isn't natural it's you know it's from it was you know farmed from natural grasses it was bred from natural grasses plastics etc so some of those are good some of those are bad once again made resources or man-made doesn't necessarily mean not good for the environment um, so let's have a quick comparison essentially we've got a little flow chart here it's a nice little summary so we've got resources into renewable then we go solar energy air and wind water tidal energy flowing soil and plants not all plants though um, then we've got non-renewables this is stuff like our fossil fuels oil, coal, um, natural gases, metals tend to be non-renewable, um, and we've got non-metallic minerals, salts, etc. So, but here is our table, and you need this table. So we've got renewable resources, so, solar energy, uh, fresh water, some soil, not always, um, particularly in Australia, uh, wood for construction, that's, that's your pine, um, tropical forest over here in non-renewable, we would tend to call those old growth rainforests, so old growth rainforests, um, some animal species, and we use these for, for all sorts of things. Animals tend to be fairly renewable, um, well, some of them, and particularly domestic animals, which are not natural resources. Um, pigs don't exist the way they do in a farm in nature. So then we have energy sources, strats, these are non-renewable, stratospheric ozone, it doesn't come back once it's been used up, um, and it gets depleted a lot by, say, planes, etc. Uh, tropical forests, biodiversity, uh, so once biodiversity is used up, so overfishing of the oceans, once that the biodiversity is gone, it doesn't come back. Uh, minerals, they tend to what's around the ground, they stay out of the ground. And we can do a nice little Venn diagram like we have here. So for example, renewable, constantly quickly formed in nature, there's some examples. Um, Non-renewable, cannot be easily formed, uh, fossil fuels, nuclear. Now, there is some overlap. Both can provide a source of energy um, and can be used to power generators by spinning a turbine. And that's kind of the key to electricity generation. So from the Earth, we've got four more things to finish off on. Basically, all our resources come from the Earth. With the exception of solar power, they all come from the Earth. So let's have a look at four. So here's one from, from, so from the four spheres, the hydrosphere, biosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere. We'll probably go a bit backwards on that. So atmosphere, uh, one resource we have is wind. Okay, so wind blows across the giant fans, the blades in a, in a windmill. Um, they turn, they turn generators, this then, generates electricity, which we can be used in a house. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, then we've got hydropower. Um, so this does have an impact on the environment, but you know, less than other things. Uh, it's more of a localized impact. So you create a dam, which causes the water to rise. 
um, and it pushes the water through at a higher pressure into a lower level river on the other side, um, pushes it through and turns once again a giant fan, or which will then turn the turbine and the generator, and this produces electricity. Um, coal power, okay, you're starting, you'll start to see a pattern here. Um, we've got coal which has come out of the ground. It is then burned into, so we've got water here. You don't need to write down the um, stuff here. So you don't need to draw this, by the way. So the water, the, the water is boiled. It goes, turns into steam, turns a turbine, and then is condensed back down and keeps going. And you have the cooling tower over here, which is pumping just steam into the atmosphere. So that's not too bad, actually. But over here, you're pumping smoke and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that's much, much worse. So... Coal power is something to be avoided. Um, biomass. Biomass is a complex one, and it comes from the biosphere. So biomass is fairly complex um, just because it is renewable, but it does have a lot of issues, both uh, human and environmental along with it. So you've got your fiber or your uh, waste products. Um, so basically anything that will produce ethanol um, can be used to turn turbines in a power plant and once again it's pretty much the same deal and here's a little summary of Australia's um, wind turbines at the moment as they stand so basically we've got 57 wind farms and at the moment they produce enough power to, to and consistently enough power to regularly power about 900,000 homes and we could easily, you know, step this up to make it a more affordable um, and useful process. But yeah, it's it's all really interesting. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in class, and we'll see you there.